First of all, um, I notice a bunch of people whenever I, I go somewhere, they tell me that the best part of my show is whenever I do this. And I think that is the most insulting thing somebody can say because I say important things. And the first thing people tell me is, I school like, but I do more than that. I do more than that. But anyway, that's fine. Um, now, I always appreciate the feedback, so continue to give me feedback. That's nice. All right, let's start off with what's happening on the lovely island of St. Martin. We begin to dispel the rumors that is out there. You know, when it's um, silly season, and I don't mean the prime minister, Brumch, because <laughs> her name is... Anyway, um, understand that um, it's always difficult for us to um, get facts from non-facts because you have persons... Um, plain political pundits, um, candidates slash reporters online saying all kind of craziness and then on the actual political co comedy show you have to put things straight so that people can not be confused by the reliable sources. So um, yesterday the um, infamous Gromiko Wilson said on his live that um, MP William Marlin Will, <coughs> will resign and Erno Labiga, no, um, Dimar Labiga will come in as member of parliament um, for the next couple of months because that is the deal that they made in order for um, Mr. Labiga to stay in the National Alliance. So, um, of course, I didn't see it, but people told me about it. So I called MP William Marlin and I called um, Dimar La Vega. And of course, they all said absolutely not. False news, fake news. Looks like um, the paparazzi is on a roll with a fake news that's happening with um, these days. Just saying things out his ass, not knowing politics. Um, but he want people to vote for him. I don't. I. I. I still don't understand. I. I, I don't get it. Um, you know, tell us about what's happening 
um, on the road and, 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 and the accidents and, and the robberies. You know, that is what he's good at. But I don't understand why he's telling me about, um, you know, a political move that hasn't happened or is not happening because it does not exist. So how come he's just saying things just so? Like, for the late night, it's fine because that's what we do. We say things all the time, so whether it comes true or not. Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. But guess what? That's what you expect because that's what a late night does. But for somebody to just say it outright, like a prediction, no, sir, you're wrong. Um, so Dima La Vega is not going to Parliament anytime soon unless you elect him um, as a candidate um, on whatever party he decides to go on come postulation. Everybody's saying it's National Alliance, but you never know. Speaking about the National Alliance, they had a youth wing launch on Sunday, and I must congratulate all the 15 people that was there. Um, I must say the National Alliance is um, showing that they have a lot of people um, behind of them um, because they were able to pack the entire, um, you know, three square room. Um, I must say that, um, you know, all the parents um, of, the, of the, the youth wing that was there was well attended. Uh, it was a well attended event. So it's a success. As you can see, the Prime Minister and the members of the National Alliance also launched their slogan for 2024 elections, which is, we are one. Now, what's hilarious about that is because it's the most hypocritical <coughs> slogan I've ever seen in my life. Because they fight the entire four years. They, they, they fought like cats and dogs. And now they're next to each other like, we are one. You see Samuel there? Like, Samuel, you serious? You ain't got no shame? <sighs> anyway, for elections, you know, all the problems gets moved over to the side. And they um, give you a depiction of um, that everything is fine. Especially the picture with Severa Jacobs, our Prime Minister, and um, the Deputy Prime Minister, um, Egbert Doran. We are one. No, you're not. Because you want her job, and she wants to keep her job. So, no, you're not. But I guess, for now, we are one. Let's see what happens. I just find it exciting. Um, but congratulations to the National Alliance for their first event for the, for the, the, the campaign season. Um, 15 people is a milestone. I think that they should work on getting at least 30 people for the next event that they plan on having. Okay? Um, speaking about... Um, Empty. <laughs> it's a segue into the Minister of Justice, Anna Richardson. So, guess what? She did an exclusive interview um, with St. Martin News Online, um, and it's on YouTube. And I decided to show some of the highlights of it because I thought it was the most hilarious video I've ever seen in my life because she wanted to show you the behind the scenes of what happens at the Ministry of Justice. Three and a half years later, just a couple of months before elections, is where she's going to show us how the Ministry of Justice works. Does she know how the Ministry of Justice works? And you should see her, you know, she's opening files and going like, this is where all the magic happens. This is where I get all the calculations wrong. Like, I just don't understand these politicians. Somebody, anybody, please get her an advisor. Somebody, please. Why is people just like, like telling her to do these crazy things? A behind the scenes of something she has not completed. Like a behind the scenes of something she has failed. A behind the scenes whereby there was a go slow because she did not finish what she said she finished a long time ago. But she given you a be behind the scenes look. <sighs> Take a look.
So, welcome. Here we have all the files, and for the first time ever within the Ministry of Justice, there are actually dossier files for each and every member of staff of this ministry. And I just want to give you an insight or a view of what that looks like. So for example, as I said, you can all outline here the various departments, the names. Um, this is what a file looks like now for a staff. I can't let you see the name on it, <laughs> but I just want to express that, you know, a ID, copy of ID. Um, you have uh, their LBAs, their, half, their whole history is now established here. And this is for every single agency within the Ministry of Justice. It was never in order before, now it is. And we have Grace Malin, who's a consultant within um, the, the ministry that has been in service for us for the last couple of months, putting all of these files together. Uh, when an employee needs a job letter, I have been advised that they have had to wait months before receiving. Now they get it within a matter of days. Um, part of the intranet system that we've established for the ministry, they can apply or request for those documents online and within days they receive it. This is a type of investment that has been put into the Ministry of Justice within this administration. From here, I'd like to take you over to introduce you to our acting SG, and she's also a part of the placement uh, process, and she's also one who's working diligently and getting the placement letters out. <laughs> Come with me. So Ms. Marlin, mm -hmm. can you give us some insight about what you're presently busy with? Presently, I'm busy with the placement letters, and the information for the placement letters is derived via an Excel sheet that is produced by the departments. Each department would then indicate uh, the history of the employee, so they would indicate what function they were doing, um, which day that function um, went into play, the scale, the um, amount of that scale, as well as the built up up until 2023. As far as we understand, Javi Bay is pretty much our last. We do mm -hmm. have some persons within other agencies, more or less, their situation is a little mm -hmm. peculiar, so it's taking a little while for them to get mm -hmm. their placement letters, but uh, pretty much before this month is out, we can confirm that every single person will have their placement letters. So Saskia, um, an opportunity now, which is uh, gonna be a very rare one, um, will you be able to walk the viewers uh, through an opportunity of explanation as to what your task entails, um, how huge this undertaking is, and what it all uh, requires for you to do. We're talking about 13 years worth of data. Um, the data starts, and I'm going to switch between a screen just for you to see, um, with what we call a payslip because uh, this is the actuals what an individual ha would have received at the time when they started service with the Ministry of Justice. Now we're talking about 700 plus employees that um, started back when we uh, established in 10, 10, 10. Um, and this goes back to date and continues because this is not a, a process that stops to, uh, this month or next month, it continues. Um, so the calculations is one that has to lead back for that individual all the way back to 10, 10, 10. You can see in this Excel sheet, um, there's a, a personnel file for 10, 10, 10, 2011, 2012, 2013, and goes forward straight to 2023. The reason why that is is because premiums and social premiums change each year. So each year we have different uh, figures to deal with to make the necessary calculation of what it would have cost. Um, to have an individual placed in a particular function with a different salary scale at that point in time to calculate the national social premiums, the pension premiums, the taxes, etc., to have a full account of what it would have cost government if it was then. Yeah, yeah. Because basically what we're doing is going back into time. We're going back into time on an individual basis monitoring a person's career. Now I say that because if you look in the sheet, I'll just give an example. If someone was once a, a team leader and they went and they, and they were promoted to a chef work team, as they call it, this happened from January and then in August, meaning that the salary point changes at that point in time. At the beginning of this initial process, I placed everyone in the sheet and then I found out that they had to put an extra increment. That one increment, that one increment across this group changed the end figure to a million guilders more. So, that's how meticulous you have to be because if you're one increment off, that's a million guilders we're talking about. I mean, a million guilders a million to the staff. 
that is due to the staff that it costs us to, to have put them in that function. Right. The end figure of what is due to the staff goes between what it would have cost us mm -hmm. and what they actually received. Yes. So there's two simultaneous processes occurring at the same time. The placement process, which is rectifying their history, their personal careers. Mm -hmm. And then we have to go through the process of getting the salary information, plugging it into a system and making it speak the same language. Why I say that is because salary information, as technology changes, has also experienced change. So from 2010, a different salary system was used up until 2013. 2014, a different salary system is used, and then it was changed in microdata, codes that were used. Um, so then when you go into the system and you can't just call up one code what you're using today, because that wouldn't call up all the information. So at a certain point, we encountered that as a challenge where we did a query and says, okay, give us salary information for the Ministry of Justice going back. And then you miss a code that changed along the way. That's and is that where we experience that when, let's say, Antec dumped information, Correct. you realize in your scanning that pockets of information was Correct. missing. There is where the Ministry of Just uh, Finance gave us the approval um, to be able to allow you the access which you have now yes. to go in on your own and extract that information correct. and fill it in for staff where it was missing, right? Yeah, correct. And, and the reason why this is so um, difficult for the, the average person is because we're talking about a year worth of data is over 95,000 lines of code. We're talking about meticulous data and being able to, one, house that data in an Excel sheet, it would crash. So we would have to put it into a more uh, robust system. Then making the links between it, meaning you have to go through it line item by line item to make that link for that employee, that salary, what happened, make the, his, the, 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 the data speak the truth of what happened for that employee. Did they receive retroactive payments, yes or no? What premiums did they uh, contribute? What allowances. what allowances did they receive? Who do we, so we blame the workers that you showed in the video or do we blame you as Minister of Justice? Or do we say, good job, thank you for telling us who's responsible for not finishing what they said they was going to finish? I don't know what the purpose was behind the video, but I thought it was ridiculous. Anyway, welcome to the Late Night Show. We have a good one for you. Let's begin. That was the journey that I wanted to take you on as to what's happening behind the scenes. I think it's really important um, that staff, for example, is not going to be able to come here and see what's happening, um, but staff want to know what is happening. So what better way than to bring it to you that you can review this. Um, thank you for your time and your opportunity to showcase this to you. And I just want to say a special thank you to SinMartinNews.com for giving us the opportunity. It's Time SXM presents a grand fundraising raffle taking place on Sunday, May 28th. The grand fundraising raffle. Get your tickets now for only $10. The first prize is a 55-inch smart TV. Second prize, a hotel weekend stay. Third prize, a Samsung phone. And the fourth prize, a 100 Gilda shopping voucher courtesy of Carrefour. It's going down on Sunday, May 28th. The fundraising raffle. Tickets available for only $10. Proceeds will go towards a back-to-school program. Purchase your tickets at Creative Juices or from any of the members call 556-5181 or 523-8272 it's time sxm at sxm we're taking travel and tourism to new heights here we boast spacious check-in areas 10 passport control points comfortable departure lounges and finally there's an airport in the caribbean that takes your travel plans as seriously as you do. Princess Juliana International Airport. 